Hey, so this is my belated look at the new releases coming out in December. Just focusing on the new number ones or anything of like major interest. I apologise for the hair. I look like a reject from the film slash graphic novel Ghost World. But I'm having a bad fringe day, so what can I do? Okay, so first off, we'll look at DC. So first up is Titans Beast World Tour Gotham, number one. So this is all part of the Beast World um, min, uh, event that's crossing over Titans. I think it's touching Nightwing, and it's doing like self-contained series set in different parts of the DC universe. Um, to be honest, I'm not interested. I'm actually thinking I might stop Titans because of it and just buy the books when they come out. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just all events. There's too much going on at the moment with events. So there's also Titus Beast World Tour Central City. Um, oh, the Beast World uh, Tour Gotham. That's by Chip Zdarsky, Grace Ellis, so, uh, Gretchen Felker Martin, Sam Maggs, Cal Starks. There's quite a number, must be a series of short stories. Very sad to like PJ Holden, Kelly Jones, etc. $5.99, 48 pages. And then there's another one for Beast World Tour Central City. So that's the Flash area of the DC Universe. Again, 48 pages, $5.99. Sizeberry, A.L. Kaplan, Alex Packnadol, etc. And various artists. So yeah, so that's um, how Beast World affects and impacts Central City. And then... Scrolling down. I don't know if there's a, there might not be that many number ones actually for DC. Sorry, I thought I'd uh, not turn the camera on. So, hi, professionalism. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, let's have a look. Right, there's another one. I don't know if this is a one shot or if it's a mini series or if it's an ongoing. There's no indication what it is. It's a three dollar ninety nine comic, thirty two pages. So standard, good standard price. Neil before Zod, written by Joe Casey, who's normally quite a solid writer. So it's focusing on Zod. Um, yes, yeah, so it says this is monumental mainline DC debut. So. Yes, yeah, so it's a Zod centric comic. Like I said, no idea if it's ongoing or one shot or whatever. Um, but some interesting covers. And you can't go wrong with Joe Casey, but I'm not going to guess it. But that's another number one. Um, Steer and Clear of the Superman Family of Titles. I'm just, if I do get them, I'll get them in like collected editions. Um, so, but if you're interested in that, I mean, there's, uh, from what I hear, they are really solid comics. But you can only get so many. But I've decided to focus on the Batman family because that's what I've been buying anyway, so that's my family for D Mark DC. Um, <coughs> pardon me, I'm really snotty as well today. Um, do, do, do. That could be it by the looks of it for number ones. Yeah, I think, I think because of it being December, um, DC aren't really focusing on pushing anything new out, which I think is a sensible option anyway, um, unlike Marvel, who just <laughs> go, hey, let's just throw a load of stuff out. Oh yeah, there's another number one, but it's an annual. Action Comics 2023 annual number one. Now it's five dollars ninety nine. The normal action is four dollars ninety nine, and that has forty eight pages. <laughs> this is five dollars ninety nine. It has the same amount of pages, so a bit bizarre. But again, written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, uh, so it's going to be good. <coughs> I 
So apparently it's tying up all the loose ends from the whole Superman storyline that Philip Kennedy Johnson started years and years ago. Um, it all culminates in this. So there's that. And I think that's a bit unusual for DC to have annuals this late on in the year. But there we have it, so they've got a Christmas annual. I think annuals in America, they just have them scattered about everywhere. Whereas in the UK, our annuals are like a hardback, proper book. Um, and they normally come out around about October time and put people buying them for like stocking fillers for Christmas. I'll have to do like a, uh, a video of that actually, because if you're from these states, you won't be familiar with that at all. But 2008, they used to do it years ago before they did it, just did like the annual extra thick issue, what they do nowadays, which of course I'll be looking at when it comes out. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for DC. Let's check in to see if I've missed anything. Oh yeah, one thing I will recommend, if you aren't getting it and you don't want to for DC, I would recommend the Blue Beetle comic. Really, really good. If you want just a fun, fresh, lively comic where you don't need to know much backstory about, I do recommend Blue Beetle comic. I do also su suggest that you get the miniseries Graduation Day, which is a very reasonably priced um, soft cover paperback. One of the most enjoyable reads I've had superhero-wise for the of the past year. Um, but... I would say that's it for DC. There's some facsimiles of um, the Batman Year One comics, if you've never had that in collected form. or in the, I, I got it years and years ago when it's in the original comic when it came out in the 80s. Um, but if you've never had, experienced it like that, it is worth picking up. I'd say that's the, one of the finest Batman comics you can get. So they're bringing out all four issues of that again. Um, so that's DC. So quickly move on to Marvel. Hopefully try and do Marvel DC image if with time i'll try and do some of the other companies if i haven't i don't know if i'll do another video because as i've explained i'm still getting over shingles i've got I've, that's all gone now but it's left me with um what they call what is it now um vi post viral fatigue syndrome so I'm, if i do something for too long i'm just wiped out for hours so i'll see how i feel but enough about that, let's go on to Marvel. And I'll, I'll try not to write, because I'm actually trying some Marvel comics. What I've done, I've stopped a few um, DC comics, I've stopped World's Finest, I've stopped Shazam. I love Dan Morris' artwork, but for some reason, I'm just not really enjoying, I'm not seeing, this is the, is it Jeremy Adams who did The Flash? This is that syndrome again, where people are raving over a certain writer, and, I just wasn't seeing it and it's the same with the world's finest i've tried it for so long some stories thought yeah this is really good um, but i don't know if that was more style over substance but i'm just not enjoying this fake retro flavor that he's bringing to it and shazam i don't know i'm just not connecting with shazam maybe it's because of that gap or what they had with um night terrors but yeah I've, I've, i think it's my problem with shazam all the time if I try it each each iteration that they bring out of it and it, it just looks gel, gel with me I, I just I don't know maybe I'm just too old for it it's uh, that's not their fault that's mine right anyway <laughs> I was just uh, waffling to I was waiting for this alone so Marvel Timeless is coming out Ugh. okay <laughs> here we go the Marvel rant but uh, Marvel when they get a gimmick they don't let go of it it's like with the um uh, The Help I Gala, sorry, I'm just looking at books for the X Men. It's now a yearly thing where they help you can vote in a team. It's like, oh, come on. It was a novel thing initially, but it's Marvel now do it with Timeless. This is the third year of Timeless, where it's a one shot by Colin Kelly, Colin Kelly Jackson Lansing. 56 pages, $6.99. Fuck me, pardon my French. That is expensive. Marvel is so expensive. 
But this is tying it with Power Man, Moon Knight, Unending, yeah, blah blah, time, timey wimey stuff. Those are the covers. I think those covers look awful, to be honest. Just not feeling that. I'm not bothering with that. Um, like I said, I'm getting some Marvel, which you find out about. One to um, look out for Moon Knight's number 30. Uh, that's the final issue of this storyline. But in the great mighty Marvel manner, instead of doing what DC do, where they, I mean, look at Nightwing, it's on issue 100 and whatever. Um, Marvel, they just cut a series short because, they, oh, if we lower number one again, more people will buy it. But no, some people think it's a good stopping point, so I won't buy it anymore. Um, but next year, there's going to be a new Moon Knight comic. I don't know if it's Jeb, I think it is Jeb McKay still. But it's like the next step in the Moonlight story. But they should have just carried on with the same story, with the same numbering. Here we go. It actually starts in this next issue, sort of in Mighty, Mar Mighty Marvel manner. They're releasing loads of them in a month. So it's called Vengeance of the Moon Knight. Vengeance of the Moon Knight. And it's by Jed McKay. And of course it's four pages. And instead of it being $4.99, it's $5.99. Because that's what Marvel do nowadays. Um... Daredevil Gang, I think these were mentioned last in the November releases last month, but Marvel have this annoying habit of tacking on the first few weeks of the next month on Switch, so it's repeating itself. So there's Daredevil Gang War, $4.99, 40 pages, Erica Schultz writing it, and I, I have absolutely no interest in it. And my screen has gone weird. Right. So yeah, so this is Marvel's new. Um, we've got a new event in Spider-Man because you've got to have an event in Spider-Man every few months because that's what Marvel do. Um, but they're spinning it with of it. I think there's about five spin-off series, four issues each or something, or five issues each. And the charging the arm and the like. I am getting Spider Man though, because I got started guessing that because I'm a sucker for anything that ties with the Craven Slash Hunt storyline, which is what they're focusing on. And it's got Patrick Gleason on the artwork, and the artwork is mm, Chef's Kiss Gorgeous. It's the best Spider Man artwork I've seen in I think since Todd McFarlane, to be honest. Or oh, since Mike Zek did um, Craven Slash Hunt. It's a, and it's actually looks like it's Zeb Wells not having much interference from um, the editors this time so it is a good comic but there's going to be this gang war miniseries through it all so I'm just going to get the Spider-Man comic and the one shot that ties it at the beginning and the one shot at the end I'm not bothering with the spin-off series again because of the gang war there's a Deadly Hands Kung Fu series three issues first issue four dollars ninety nine, forty pages Greg Pat writer, good writer, but I'm not bothered. Spider Woman, she was advertised last month, and now she's on to issue two of Gang War. Luke Cage is the same. Um, so I think that's it for the Spider Man universe. Uh, again, it could be a very brief one this time, um, because of it being Christmas, a lot of companies aren't launching number, new number ones. But saying that, I think Image has got quite a few. But that's because it's creator owned, so. <coughs> There's some um, facsimiles coming out. Giant size superstars. $6.99. There's a few one shots which I think are in the Marvel Voices range um, Avengers. There's a new Spider-Gwen comic. Again, why don't they just make this ongoing? It's sort of just series and series and series of miniseries. This is one of four by Melissa Flores. I'm not familiar with her. Ina Balam doing the artwork. Those are the covers. I don't know much about Spider-Gwen apart from the films um, with Miles Morales. Never really read the comics, but $5.99, 40 pages. <laughs> Century number one. Again, I think this was mentioned last last time. I did a new one, so I'm not going to go and see. So Thunderbolts was mentioned last time as well, so I'll just skip through those. And I think I 
Yeah, I think. Oh, there's a one shot. Original X Men. It's old Tammy Wimey. Featuring the original X Men. Great cover. Good writer, Christos Gage. Artist on the inside. Artist in brackets. Greg Land. So I'm not going to buy it. I hate Greg Land with a vengeance. He's notorious for tracing and just repeating his images as well. But he traces from, uses Lightbox to trace images from porn magazines, um, from other artists' work, from act stills of actors, from magazines and all that. There's nothing original about him. If you look at his work, it's bad. It looks shiny and nice when you look at it briefly, but yeah, he's, he's not got an original bone in his body. And Marvel keeps on giving him, he, Marvel's the only company that employs him. And they give him so much stuff and he's so bad. He ruins anything. Really cannot stand him. There's a vac facsimile of the first Wolverine issue. Oh, $4.99 again. And that'll only be 17, 18 pages. Rip off. <coughs> but yeah, that's it. I think there's not really any major new number ones because of it being Christmas period. Um, but like I said, I am getting a few Marvel now which I will mention at some point in another video. Oh, there's a new Star Wars one. I think it might be one shot. It's called Revelations. Yeah, loads of writers on it. 56 pages, $6.99. What? Sorry, but crazy. Okay, so that's that for that. So that's Marvel done. I'll just do image, because I'm feeling a bit, <laughs> no, this is taking a bit else of me. Seriously, the things I do for you. So, I'll uh, move on to image. Um, I might do during the week, if I feel up to it, I might do the other indies. Um, but I'm just focusing on the bigger publishers tonight. So, here we go. Just wait for it to load up. But if I remember rightly, I think image has quite some good tasty new ones right, so what i'm going to start doing as well you know how i do my new comic hauls and that lot a lot of my image now v and quite a lot of my image has moved over now um to digital format because with image once the comic's been out for four weeks on digital it goes down to about one pound 27 pence something like that so it just makes sense whereas marvel and dc Theirs doesn't really, theirs aren't much cheaper on digitally unless you wait six months for Marvel. But DC doesn't go down, that's why I get DC in floppy format. I get, I've still getting some Marvel in floppy format because even with, especially with, Marvel, with DC, some are getting trade paperbacks because their trade paperbacks, paperbacks are really good value for money. But Marvel, it's only worth getting the floppy unless I get the UK version because the American version of the trade paperbacks. Are extremely expensive for what they are um, it's, or even the hardbacks it's like the Sins of Sinister hardback collection it's just charging $75 for a 300 page book I don't think it's even 300 pages um, when you compare it to Batman under the under the Red Hood or whatever it's called the deluxe edition that had five, 500 pages and that was $49.99 hardback deluxe hard you know big format so Marvel are charging an extra twenty five dollars, and it's a book with two hundred pay le two hundred less pages. But people are stupid, and people buy it. Anyway, I was, I'm just doing again that again for filling. So there's some interesting stuff coming out from Image. First one, Adventure Man Ghost Lights. This is a series from Matt Fraction with art by Terry Dodson. It's kind of like a high adventure comic. Um, so. That's cover. I did try the first mini series of this, and it was it was okay, uh, from what I remember. There's a new three parts comic, uh, three issue comic coming out called Bloodrick. Well, it's like a fantasy one. It's by Andrew Crank. I've not heard of him. Three dollars and nine, and it's forty pages again. Image do real good value. I still do get some image. It's the ones like Jeff Lemire. I'm 
anything he brings I'll get in floppy format because I just love reading his in floppy and I'm going to get the Daniel Warren Johnson Transformers when that comes out and there's a few of us get like the um, spin-off of that text blood the western one but I'm just being more selective now for what I get physically it's just cost effective it means I can read more comics it's just that they happen to be digitally there's another one called The Bloody Dozen Tale of the Shrouded College one of six by Charles Seall Art um, is Alberto Jimenez Albuquerque. 32 pages, $3.99. And it's a it's space vampires, basically. Chelsea O's normally good. He did the 8 billion genies, whatever it was called. So that should be a good read. He's normally quite interesting. Um, And again, I think that's it for number ones or standout issues. Okay, yep, so that's it. Okay, so that's not too bad. Um, I'll stop it there because, like I said, I'm getting a bit tired now. Um, if I'm up to it this week, I'll do look at the, some of the other publishers like Boom, um, maybe Titan... AWA, IDW, people like that, Dark Horse as well. Um, but for now, well, that's it. So, <laughs> like I said, excuse the hair. Looking like a reject from Ghost World. And I should know better at my age, but it's either that I blow my, keep on blowing my fringe. So, uh, yeah, I'll do some more videos soon. Hopefully I'll be getting uh, quite a few, few uh, boxes to unhaul as well, unpack. Uh, uh, because some reason some comic DC comics didn't come to the UK last week so they're coming with this shipment this week um, so as soon as I get them I'll let you see what I've got and I'm gonna do um, look at some manga books what I'd recommend if you've been thinking about going into manga manga looking at manga but ones that will appeal to somebody who's used to like reading Western comics or say like more grown-up comics like Vertigo etc um, I've got a few authors that I'm actually looking at now on my shelf. I'll just show you over, over there. So that'll be my, one of my things to do. And that's it. So hope you have a good week. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.